Hi, I'm Amina Wasuma, and I'm here to talk about my novella, For the Love of Blood, Episode 10, Columbia. Now, we left off with Amber assessing herself. Well, meanwhile, at Banderos' mansion, it's night, and Banderos is in his bedroom, which is decorated in royal red with gold trimmings. Really nothing to worry about. And he keeps his luga in his nightstand, and he's sleeping pretty well. Down the hall, on the other side of the mansion, is Blood's studio apartment. Well, he's asleep, and he has his dream, same dream about the clan chasing him and, you know, setting his mom on fire. And he wakes up in a cold sweat. And it's like all the wealth and money he has now and peace, he cannot forget his past his haunting trauma. So, that goes to show you, no matter where you go, you can't run from yourself. And he's beginning to realize that. So he goes back to sleep. The next morning, it's 5 a.m., Amber is in Cortez's mansion, underground gym, practicing at the firing range. Now she's learning how to fire a gun and she has to be pretty good. Uh, she's practicing and practicing and you know, she's getting better every day. So Cortez comes in, good morning Amber, good morning. And uh, he says, I have some new weapons for you. I'd like to show you. And so he shows her a vanity case and it has um, acid perfume, <laughs> hairspray that's a blowtorch, an eye pencil that's a knockout gas, a lipstick that's an, uh, that's an explosive and earrings that are mini grenades and a necklace, it's a pearl necklace, but actually it's metal. And if she swings it, she can knock someone out or even kill them. She can choke them with it. So she's saying, wow, I'm gonna be using all of this. And he says, no, I'm just showing, showing it to you when the time is right, you know, you will get it. He said, well, how come I can't use it now? He said, well, I think you should use something a little simpler. So he pulls out a camera. He said, you see this camera? It records everything that you say and everything that you see. He said, wow. I, you know, that's cool, you know. Well, I can be down here as a tourist, you know. So he said, well, but first, we gotta get you set up. And she says, what do you mean? He said, well, you can't stay here. And she says, well, where am I gonna go? He said, we have, Miguel is gonna take you uh, you know, to a hotel. And she was like, you mean I'm not gonna be staying here? I'm gonna be in a hotel? You're just putting me out? And he says, yeah. You gotta start on your own sooner or later. She said, but I'm not finished, you know, training. I don't know how to use a gun really that well. And he's like, well, you, you, you'll catch on. You'll catch on. <laughs> but, uh, you have to go. 
you know, you've trained. I think you're ready, you know. Uh, and we need to set you up in the hotel, get people in the city to see you, you know. Being a tourist, set up a little uh, image for you. And then when you meet blood, you have a little background to tell it. You just didn't pop out of the clear blue sky. Actually, well, he will assume that you did. So she says, well, my father, if my father finds out that I was busted, you know, for a drug deal, and I'm actually in a luxurious prison, what do you think he's going to say? So Cortez says, well, this is strictly business. And she says, you're some piece of work. You know that? <laughs> and he said, you should be grateful. And she says, yeah, I am. And she tries to give him a hug, and he's cold as ice. You know, he's very professional. He's not going to baby her. And she says, well, what am I going to do? He said, use your brains. So he says, Miguel is waiting for you. And she said, well, what about my things? He said, they'll be sent to the hotel. You just go with him and he'll check you in and, you know, get you sent. So she leaves Cortez's mansion. And in her mind, she feels, I'm being kicked out again. You know, I'm kicked out of my uh, career. I'm kicked out of my life. I'm kicked out with my father. I'm kicked out with blood. You know, I'm just an orphan. And now I'm going to this strange hotel in a city that I've never been to, nor do I speak the language and I'm going to be alone. So Miguel drives her to uh, the city and uh, in the Corvette. And so she says, well, when they get to the hotel, she says, well, am I gonna keep the car? And he says, no. He said, but you told me it was mine. And so he says, yeah, I told you it was yours. When you finish the assignment, you can get it. But if I give it to you now, uh, that'll tip blood uh, that you are not a tourist. You have to look like a struggling model. You know, and a struggling model would not be driving a Corvette. She would be taking the taxis. So she says, okay. And she's thinking, I'm to get everything that they say that they're going to give me, I don't have. I'm still, I still don't have anything but me. So she goes in the hotel and uh, they're expecting her, you know, Senor Rita Stone. Uh, your room is in, on the second floor, 210. And she's saying, well, I'm hoping that there's a back alley because I don't want to be, you know, I want to, I want a room near the staircase. And they said, well, yeah, the room is near the staircase. Said, That's what she told me to go. You know, uh, if I have to escape in the middle of the night or something like that, I need to not take the elevator. I need to be closer to the stairs. He says, we got you a room right next to the staircase. So she goes up to her room, she takes the elevator, she goes up to her room and she opens the door and it's a huge uh, shabby room. Not real shabby, but not luxurious. And the hotel is kind of goth, spooky. <laughs> like they don't get that many visitors, dusty. 
she goes into this old, you know, room. It's huge. And now she closes the door and puts the chair up against the door. And she looks. There's her bags already there. But Cortez told her, oh, we'll send you back. But he already sent them. <laughs> Again, everything is done for her. So she lays low. You know, and uh, she takes the camera, looks at it. She takes a shower, changes her clothes, and she decides to go out. So uh, she goes downstairs and she asks him, well, where is the nearest, you know, restaurant? And he said, well, it's right up the street. Now, there are not that many people in the street. A lot of people migrated to America <clears throat> because Banderos killed a lot. And most of his work has come from Mexico, uh, you know, and they come back and forth because he changes uh, the guard a lot. So the streets are not that crowded. You know, so she walks around and she looks. It's actually really beautiful. And then she comes back to the hotel and she calls Cortez. And uh, he tells her, well, you got to find blood. And uh, she says, yeah, I know. And I walked around and I took pictures and, you know, I looked at the sights. And then I decided to come back to the hotel. And he says, well, get a good night's sleep. And tomorrow, you will go and find blood. So she's thinking now, well, how am I going to find him? You know, and when I find him, what am I going to, you know, do? You know, what am I going to say to him? And she's terrified in a way. She's trying to figure out, okay, what if he, you know, finds out that I'm a spy? This is always in the back of her mind with this assignment. I think it's because he knows her. You know, they were intimately involved. And they had this love affair. And she's like, I really don't want to see him, but I have no other choice. Meanwhile, at Banderos' place, he's torturing Agent Johnson again. And Agent Johnson is not talking. Uh, he has, you know, put nails in his hands and he's set his fingertips of fire. He's done everything he could to get this agent to talk, and Johnson is just not talking. <laughs> and blood comes in, and he's pouring salt in Johnson's wounds. He's whipped him, and blood says, oh my God, that's got to sting. He said, well, if you cross me, that's what, that's what I'm gonna do to you, and blood said, don't worry, I'm never gonna cross you. And so he tells Blood, well, you go into town tomorrow and you get supplies. And so Blood says, okay, I'll go in and get supplies. And he says, well, we got a shipment and uh, we need you to make the transaction. And Blood says, okay. So night comes the next day. Amber gets up and she goes downstairs and she asks uh, the desk clerk, where can she eat? He says, well, you can go to the restaurant down the street. And she goes, she eats, and she actually uh, just sits there and looks at the scenery and everything. And then uh, she asks, 
you know, who comes in. There's a lot of people come in the place and they tell her, yeah, some tourists come in, some uh, regulars come in. And they don't tell her too much, you know. So she leaves and uh, she goes back to the hotel. And Cortez calls her and tells her to go to a restaurant down the street. It's almost like a, a, a secret bar, you know, like it's hidden. And she's like, oh, wow, what's there? And he tells her, this is where blood hangs out. And so uh, he comes to get supplies. And so she goes, she takes the camera, he tells her to take the camera because you need to record everything he's saying and everything he's doing without him being suspicious. So she goes and it's a big purple door. It's like an iron door, it's blacked out windows. And she rings the bell and the door opens and she steps inside. And it smells like a beer garden. It's a long, dark hall. And she walks all the way down the hall. She's terrified, trembling. Oh my God. What's on the other side of the door at the end of the hall? So finally she gets to the door and she opens it. And what does she see? Women dressed in Colombian uh, like uh, costumes and they're dancing and uh, music is playing. And they're African Latino. And she, I mean, there's a real strong African Latino uh, community there because of slavery. And uh, she goes in and they're dancing and they're dancing with older men and, you know, and they're doing like Colombian, you know, dancing and the drums are beating and it's lively and there are tables and people are sitting at tables, you know, eating and drinking. And at the bar, there's blood. His back is turned. He doesn't see her, but she sees him. Uh, she's wondering, how do I go over and approach him? But for some uncanny, intuitive uh, reason, blood turns around. Like he feels her watching him, and he turns around, and he yells, Amber Stone! And she says, oh, blood, is that you? Yeah, come on over here, girl. And he gets up and hugs her. And, uh, you know, what are you doing down here? And she says, well, I decided to take a vacation. You know, and I decided to come to Columbia. And I'm taking pictures and, you know, I don't know. I just took time off. And he was like, well, give my girl a you know, a drink. And she's like, I don't drink. He said, you don't drink? He said, neither do I. And she said, I don't do drugs anymore either. He says, neither do I. And the sparks are flying between them. And he's like, uh, okay, you'll have a pina colada without any alcohol. And so he orders two. And uh, he tells her to sit down and, well, tell me you know, about the case. You know, I heard you got uh, busted. And she says, yeah, they found the Coke that I that you gave me in my pocketbook, but they let me go, it was my first offense. He said, oh, okay. He says, news gets down here slower, but it gets down here. So uh, what's going on in New York? She said, well, I'm on hiatus. And uh, 
I decided to come down to Columbia and just relax. And then brought blood, excuse me, says to her, I knew you would come down here looking for me. I knew I would see you again. And she says, it's still the same blood, full of bravado. <laughs> How did you know I would come down here? I didn't even think that I would ever see you again. He said, well, oh, I knew I would see you. And I, he says, uh, we got some unfinished business to take care. Now she's thinking, what do you mean? He said, well, where'd you stay? She says, well, I'm staying up the street, you know, at the hotel. And he says, okay. He said, well, first, here's your money. And he goes in his pocket and gives her $1,500. And she says, $1,500, you only owe me $500. He says, no, I'm going to give you the whole thing. She says, well, where did you get this money from? He says, oh, I'm doing real good down here. You know, my boss. And she says, oh, wow. I don't believe it. He says, yeah, my boss is wealthy, and uh, I, I work for him. She says, well, what kind of work do you do? And he says, well, I get supplies. I get furniture for him. I get, you know, art. And she says, you know how to shop for furniture? I can remember when uh, we were remodeling the stash, I had to pick out all the furniture. He said, well, I learned a lot since I've been down here. You know, I've learned a great deal. I'm a changed man. She said, yeah. Sound like the same old blood to me. He said, no, baby, I'm changed, you know? And uh, we got some unfinished business. And so she was like, whoa, what are you talking about? He said, let's go back to your place. She said, so soon? I said, yeah, we don't need to waste no time. <laughs> now she's thinking I can't say no to him. Uh, so she says to him, well, don't you think we should get to know each other since uh, we're both changed people? He said, what's to know? In time, we'll, see, we'll know everything we need to know, but right now, we need to take care of this business. And so he says, come on, I'll take you back to your hotel room. And, uh, <laughs> He pays for the drink, you know, she said, yeah. But she didn't even take a sip of. And uh, they leave. And next thing you know, he's carrying her across the threshold of her hotel room. Closes the door, throws her on the bed, strips butt naked, in front of her. And what a beautiful sight. I mean, he looks so irresistible to her. She doesn't want to make love with him. I mean, that's not what her intention was. I mean, so soon. But uh, the sparks are flying between them and he looks like a irresistible dark chocolate cake. <laughs> to her and uh, so they uh, consummate their reunion and he satisfies her in ways that she's never been satisfied before so this is a mind blowing uh, trip for her and it's something she I don't want to do it but I'm compelled to do it and now, this complicates matters. So tune in for episode 11, Training Day.